Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Season 2, Episode 6 of Yuzuru Hanyu is My Emergency Contact, the Fan You Fan Me podcast. On August 4th, things in the fan universe got complicated. Yuzu and I had to sit down and have a long heart to heart about how we were going to move forward with all of this. Spoiler alert, we figured it out. The two posts in this episode, Can I Still Love Yuzu and This Blue Marble, are glimpses into those imaginary conversations I had with Yuzu. Though I didn't include everything we said to each other. These posts were released during a time when people were fighting over more than whether or not they were in favor of the Rondo costume choker. P.S. I'm in favor. The Fan you Village was on fire, and not in the cool Yuzu Firebird entrance way. It got so bad at one point that Yuzu even tried pulling his non-phone out of his yukata sleeve like a magic scarf to distract everyone. Thanks for trying, Yuzu. Can I Still Love Yuzu was written from a place of love, for the fan yous and for Yuzu. It was something I needed to write at that vulnerable moment to move beyond that vulnerable moment. Yuzu has already given us so many wonderful things since August 4th and promised even more to look forward to. And that's what I want to do. Look forward. I even questioned whether to include this post in the podcast or let it go the way of the red glove in prologue. Really, Yuzu, where did that glove go? But these words are still part of my fan you story. Everyone had something to say in that vulnerable moment. This was just my somewhat wordier version of other fan you's expressions of I miss my baby kitty. Is it sad? Yes. On the surface. But if you listen closer, I hope you might discover a different answer. While I am personally putting this post away after this podcast, you'll still be able to find it in the drawer if you need it, next to Yuzu's red glove. Se no, hi. Can I still love Yuzu? Am I okay? Yes. Am I okay? No. Will I be okay? I don't know. The only thing I know for certain is that I still love Yuzu. The same Yuzu who announced he got married, is married, will be married, accidentally had a skating term auto-corrected to mean married, we aren't exactly sure. What we do know is that something happened, is happening, or will happen. At a very Yuzu time, in a very Yuzu way, Yuzu told us something very not Yuzu, wrapped in very Yuzu words. I imagine an interviewer once again attempting to crack the Yuzuru vague you code. Interviewer, you put out a statement about getting married. Yuzu, I put out a statement about skating. Interviewer, yes, but in that statement, you said you were getting married. Yuzu, was that before or after the part about skating? Interviewer, it was sort of toward the beginning? Yuzu. I distinctly remember putting out a statement about my skating. Interviewer. So who? Yuzu. Please continue to support my skating. This has been Hanyu Yuzuru. But no matter how vaguely wrapped, how carefully intended, how gently presented, the words were there. And we found ourselves with a lengthy statement about Yuzu skating which felt as though it had arrived tied to a brick and hurled through our windows at 11.11. But nothing in my life had changed, right? So I cleaned up the broken glass, replaced the window, and put the brick and the letter in my scrapbook, because anything from Yuzu is worth keeping. I clicked a heart under words that had broken mine. And I tried to be okay. I tried living a day without Yuzu. I didn't say good morning to my Yuzu screensaver. I didn't watch share practice. I didn't watch gift. I didn't wear my prologue hoodie. 
I didn't listen to Sui Hazen. I didn't go into the room with my Yuzu calendar or my Yuzu banner or my other Yuzu calendar or my other Yuzu banner or my Lote Clear files. Turns out the only room in my apartment without a photo of Yuzu is the bathroom. I didn't say goodnight to Walzaru. I didn't even drink Dr. Pepper. It was a dark day. I felt like someone trying a crash diet or a pessimist who vows, bad word choice, not to complain for 24 hours. I discovered quickly that a day without Yuzu, much less a life without Yuzu, simply wasn't going to work for me. I realized it isn't about moving on from Yuzu. It is about moving on with Yuzu. But what does that look like? Am I okay with that? Yes. Am I okay with that? No. But I still love Yuzu. And I have questions, and they are not who or when. Can I still love Yuzu? Is it okay to still love Yuzu? Do I still need to love Yuzu? But more importantly, how am I supposed to feel now when I hear blinding lights? From the moment I read Yuzu's announcement, I felt the heavy burden of responsibility to spin this for the fanus who are sad. I felt the responsibility to take this incomprehensible emptiness some of us are feeling and make it into something beautiful we can move on with together and survive with Yuzu. But I can't do that. And I'm so sorry. I cannot take how I am feeling right now, transform it into something beautiful, and be okay by the end of a blog post. Because I am not okay, and I don't know how to make this okay for anyone else who is not okay. I want to say meaningful things. I want to speak for the fan you who has been struck speechless. I don't know how to be okay, and I don't know when I will know how to be okay. All I know is that I will either be okay and with Yuzu, or I will not be okay and with Yuzu. I've started counting time in hours since the news. It's been 24 hours. It's been 36 hours. It's been 48 hours. I can't be expected to be over the initial sadness yet, right? But how long can I say that? What happens when it has been weeks later, months later, years later, and I'm still counting as if I believe there will be a resolution in my heart after a certain passage of time? And as I saw more and more congratulatory messages, celebratory wedding bell emojis, and sisterly notes to Mrs. Yuzu, I felt more and more tasked to speak particularly on behalf of the lonely Fanyu. The lonely Fanyu without a husband, the lonely fan you without a boyfriend, the lonely fan you without children. Though I know it is possible to feel lonely even with all of these things. The lonely fan you who Yuzu kept from feeling lonely. The lonely fan you who has no easy words of congratulation. The lonely fan you who is heartbroken. Because we have finally found an emotion we cannot share with Yuzu. The comfort of finding your one and only, and them finding you in return. How do you share this with the non fan yous in your life? When you have normal people sadness, it is easy to find comfort in your friends and colleagues. A family member passes away, you have a sick pet, you're missing someone you actually know. They understand, they relate. But to keep the facade, the forced smile of okay, when your heart is breaking, 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 because if you crack for even a minute and let your true feelings betray that facade of okay, you will be asked, why are you crying? And you'll have no choice but to bury your face in your poussin and say, my imaginary figure skater boyfriend announced his marriage. And this is where some might say, Know your place, fan you. I get it. Really. Yuzu doesn't know who we are, but he has never treated us that way. He cares about us. He creates for us. He wants our support. He wants to comfort us. We touch his heart and make him cry. He does the same for us. 
I don't remember anyone saying, oh, stop. He doesn't even know who we are when he was bearing his heart for us while skating to Sui Hazen at Gift, or painstakingly creating a YouTube Christmas present for us, or lovingly reading the chat at Share Practice. That's what this entire past year has been, getting closer to Yuzu. And everyone had been celebrating it. Now it is suddenly, know your place. Yuzu made it clear where our place is, and it's with him. I never thought I would marry Yuzu. There was never any delusion, except maybe the fun kind. Turns out, the only thing I was delusional to believe was that Yuzuru Hanyu could be single. But I was lonely. And from the moment Yuzu came into my life, that loneliness disappeared. Entirely. Entirely. It was as if Yuzu had gently placed his hand over that hole in my heart and said, Ima boku ga iru yo. All these years later, on the morning of August the 4th, he finally removed it and said, Watashi wa mo ikune. And I am feeling that hole of loneliness anew. I forgot how empty I can feel. And I never thought Yuzu would make me sad. What I felt whenever I saw Yuzu was pure happiness. But in the blink of a tweet, I looked at Yuzu differently, with a whisper of sadness. No matter how hard I tried to ignore it, that feeling, that whisper of sadness now caused by the source of my greatest happiness, continued to grow. What was I supposed to do? Yuzu was the only one who could help me escape being sad. What was I supposed to do when Yuzu was the source of that sadness? The medicine was killing the patient. And then, and then, I saw someone call Yuzu a liar, and I wanted to explode. At that moment, it wouldn't have mattered if Yuzu had eight wives. I was ready to defend him more ferociously than ever before. It was as if my broken Fanyu heart had been shocked back into health, and I felt like my Fanyu self again. Yo kata. I was going to be okay. But the next morning I wasn't okay. Again. Absolutely nothing had changed. Just me. Again. Asking myself if I was ever going to be okay. Again. It seems Yuzu's loneliness is a much more artistically abstract version of loneliness than my own. I imagined he and I were sharing the version of loneliness, which is coming home to an empty apartment, watching Yuzu, and then going to bed alone. Though I never really thought he did the watching Yuzu part. Okay, maybe I did. There are so many things we thought we shared with Yuzu, besides his practice. For many of us, we also thought we were sharing the experience of being single. He seemed truly alone. I saw what I was feeling in his eyes, his actions, his words, his moments of despair. It was never about wanting Yuzu to be suffering alone, but there was an open door between us, a connection we could feel with him, the struggle of being alone in the world. I thought, if Yuzu can be alone, so can I. But now that door has been shut, and we are on the other side, still lonely, and now without Yuzu. Whenever I was alone, I felt like lonely Yuzu was walking beside me, sitting beside me, at his laptop beside me, on his non-phone beside me, and that made everything okay, Des. Now, Yuzu isn't lonely, but I still am. How can I be alone, alone? I thought he needed us. Does he still? He must, or he wouldn't have asked us to stay by his side. Yuzu once said that if he ever married, he thought his fans may feel he had betrayed us. You have not betrayed us, Yuzu. You could never betray us. Just as you could never lie to us. And we could never lie to you. And that is why many of us have not been able to say congratulations yet. It's not because we do not wish you happiness. It's not because we do not support your decision. It is because we are Hitori.ta. 
and we are missing that yuzu in the long black coat and the two big boots who was Hitori Data with us. I have often said there is nothing Yuzu could do to make me turn my back on him, always being fully aware that this is a bold promise for me to make. But it is a promise I intend to keep. We will be with you forever, Yuzu. Just know that when you are ready to live your days without the fan use, you will have to dismiss us. In Yuzuru blunt you terms. Because we will never walk away on our own. We will always be waiting right behind you. You simply need to turn around to find us. We are still living a beautiful love story with Yuzu. An arena full of glowing hearts and wrists for Yuzu that spreads far beyond the walls and ceilings. And there is no villain in this story. It is a story full of people trying to love and protect and cherish one another. It is no surprise to discover at last the theme of Yuzu's love story is simply there is too much love. But dear fan Yuz, remember this. You can love Yuzu and still feel sad. We cared about this person, and we still care about this person. Through all of this, I am still worried about Yuzu. Am I okay? Yes. Am I okay? No. But I hope Yuzu still is. Our hearts are invested. It may not have been through a registration or wedding vows or cutting a cake, but we each have made a commitment to Yuzu in our own way. A commitment that we have fiercely protected, deeply valued, and clung to for dear life. Whatever moment Yuzu touched your heart, you cannot be expected to turn that off after two kanji. And I don't think Yuzu is asking us to. I read the news at 1.08 on August 4th. I loved Yuzu with every speck of my heart at 1.07. Where was that love supposed to go by 1.09? That much love cannot be expected to simply vanish. But a man who now belongs to someone else once told me, And I will continue to believe him. After that post, I think some people thought I was going off the grid completely. That perhaps Fan You Fan Me was going to stay crying in the kiss and cry forever. All I can say to that is... Um, let me correct you. Less than one month before Yuzu's announcement, I very publicly declared that I would follow Yuzu anywhere, for every step. I said for always, in English and Japanese. If I had bailed on August 4th, that would have just been awkward. Though I can't lie, every time someone says, Romeo has found his Juliet, I might reach for my Pusan tissue case. So, there's that. All I have ever done is love Yuzu. And the only thing I ever need to do is love Yuzu. I said things got complicated on August 4th, but the truth is they couldn't be simpler. I have one purpose as a fan you, and that is to love Yuzu. Not love Yuzu only if he does what I want him to do. Not love Yuzu only once I win a ticket lottery, which I did for gift or at least get an elusive Sekisei serum, and certainly not claim to love Yuzu better than any other fan you. We are so much better off loving Yuzu together, in our own, particularly unique, ways. Se no hai. This blue marble. Yuzu is still Yuzu. The fan yous are still the fan yous. So why does it suddenly feel like we're a million blue glass marbles spilled from a bowl and rolling aimlessly in different directions? We've each been comprehending, understanding, dealing, celebrating, mourning, supporting, and waiting in our own ways. One fan you simply messaged me punctuation, to which I could only respond, right? And then we had said all we had to say to each other on the topic. 
One fan you point blank asked me to support Yuzu's decision. Wait, are we voting on this marriage? And one fan you nearly set her kitchen on fire. Turns out she was still blazing for Yuzu. As 1111 skated through 1112, 1113, 1114, and then 1111 on day after day and week after week, it became clear that the Fanyus were not only missing Yuzu, but also choosing how to evolve with Yuzu, and not always in the expected directions. Of course, there were the instant happy Fanyus, who somehow found it within themselves to handle this announcement with a plus five GOE. These Fanyus were not only supportive, they were so over the ski happy that they were calling wedding caterers on behalf of Yuzu. Will you be choosing the gyoza option or the gyoza option? Before Yuzu had even finished his statement of love for figure skating. To these fan yous, I give a standing ovation and an enthusiastic banner wave. You achieved the super slam of fan youism. I am impressed, jealous, and not the least bit skeptical. Then there were the carry on fan yous who identified an important need in the fan universe, normalcy. They were able to do what many of us couldn't, keep it together. I'm sure they were experiencing many of the same feelings as the rest of us, so I just want to say thank you for drawing that picture of Yuzu in his Tenchi costume. You may have been sobbing while you did it, but you are doing the invaluable work we so desperately need. For me, the biggest surprise came from the keeping it real fan news. They took this shift as an opportunity to say everything they have never said to Yuzu in an effort to protect him. Honestly, Yuzu, those Aura photos weren't my favorite. I haven't really connected with some of your new programs. Remember that costume you wore four years ago? I didn't care for it. I didn't really feel the way I said you made me feel with blinding lights. Okay, that last one was completely fabricated. There's no way anyone would have ever said that. Initially, I thought it was a lone arrow shot harmlessly into the air. But as I saw these comments more frequently, I wondered if we were about to get a hashtag tell Yuzu the truth trending. They were different from messages of hate or bullying. These were thought out, well-spoken, intelligent, constructive criticism. I didn't expect people to go toe pick to toe pick with Yuzu in this way. And I'm not sure Yuzu did either. If it starts to get to you, Yuzu, just pick the gyoza option and look at that drawing of you in your Tenshi costume. Trust me, it helps. And then there were the Fanyus who said nothing. And then there were the Fanyus who some people thought should have said nothing. While I'm not referencing anyone specific, I will say that I think all I did was exactly what Yuzu had been wanting us to do through his skating. I felt connected. I embraced my emotions. I acknowledged the loneliness inside of me. I was vulnerable and I will stay vulnerable until I can't any longer. Or at least that's what I imagine one of those non-specific fan news might feel like saying. While some of us went straight into a combo with jump one as the announcement and jump two the flawless triple axle with a landing timed perfectly with the wrist lights, some of us needed a Euler in between. Some of us starfished across the ice, slid into the boards, and are still lying there hoping we don't get run over by the Zamboni. I'd like to think my jump was similar to Yuzu's 2021 World Team Trophy Let Me Entertain You Triple Axel. It looked deadly for a second, but was miraculously saved. No matter the style or the score, because we learned a long time ago that the score doesn't matter, right Yuzu? The important thing is that we are still on the ice. The Yuzu Nuzu scattered the Fanyu opinion like hundreds of gift noticed a lot of starlights. The question now is whether we will stay scattered or manage to focus our efforts into one beaming protective ring surrounding Yuzu like the end of Prologue's fleeting dream. 
And the only thing more beautiful than gifts noticed a lot of? Seriously, it was so, so beautiful! Is our love for Yuzu. But the outpouring of love hasn't just been from the Fanyus to Yuzu. It has also been Fanyu to Fanyu. Except for those people who Yuzu's announcement just made mean. It's like there's been a terrible snowstorm and we're finally starting to dig out and check on our neighbors. Do you have power? Is your heat working? Do you need a white legend blanket? We've been going door to door with casseroles of sadness because we still have the recipe from when we made it for the non fan use in the competition days. Through it all, more than one fan you has knocked on my door. Some have offered virtual hugs. Some have simply asked for a sign of life. Some just want to be heard. One fan you has been a constant source of Yuzu support, diligently working to replace the feathers in my fan you wings. How we are able to provide so much love for each other while still having hearts that I know are filled to capacity with love for Yuzu is magical. All this time, I thought Yuzu was my only emergency contact. Some of us met in the dark corner that had once been used for very different purposes, and we shared feelings not related to faux fingerless gloved hands over eyes or premeditated masquerade hair sweeps. But that is only the dark corner's temporary use, because we know it is going to need to be restocked soon for its original purpose. That corner will always be there. And it's going to stay dark. I mean, come on. He's still Yuzu. Some fan yous can only manage to get out the words baby and kitty. Or a combination of the two. Though I'm not certain that is a direct result of the news. Some fan yous have been desperately trying to gather the scattering blue marble fan yous as some roll further and further away from Yuzu. Also similar to gathering lost sheep, which is exactly what we all looked like in our gift blouse-ons at the Tokyo Dome, especially when making a run for our seats when Let's Go Crazy started playing. Some marbles have rolled further away than others, and some marbles didn't start far away until other marbles slammed into them and caused them to ricochet off the table entirely. Some have found themselves gradually rolling back toward Yuzu through a gravitational pull that they can't explain. And some are questioning whether they can even stay a marble at all. As for me, I wasn't sure which direction I was rolling. To quote Yuzu, because that is always a good idea, I didn't know what was waiting where we're heading, but I knew I had to keep going. I knew I had to run on. So at last, I ran to Gift. Gift showed me that Yuzu had also prepared for us. He was checking on us before we even knew we needed to be checked on. Truthfully, I was afraid to watch Gift again. What I once thought was the most beautiful gift ever given had transformed for me in an inexplicable way. Or at least I feared I would feel that way from the very first, Are you happy there? To the very last, are you alone and sad? How did you know, Yuzu? But then I had an epiphany. Even though we didn't know everything that was going on in Yuzu's life when Gift was created, Yuzu did. He wasn't lying to us, of which I never thought. It wasn't deception, of which I also never thought. But he was preparing us. He was giving us the tools to survive. He had sent the first aid kit before the cut. I just don't think he realized how many of us would pass out at the first sight of blood before we were able to get the box open in time to stop the bleeding. He wanted us to have this as a place of comfort to turn to when things are rough. He knew some of us would be hurting. And he cared, as only Yuzu has always cared. I said Yuzu had removed his hand from the hole in my heart and taken his leave. I now see that Gift was Yuzu's way of carefully holding our hearts with both hands and being with us forever.
So thank you for taking care of us, Yuzu. I still may not know where we're heading, but this blue marble is staying in the bowl for you. Yuzu finally just skated over, picked up the entire bowl of marbles himself, and held it close to his chest. At a time when some of us had never felt further away from him, Yuzu made sure to bring us closer to him than ever. If you saw Yuzu's September member video, you are picturing exactly what I'm talking about. It's a good thing the dark corner is still open, isn't it? Everything I write about Yuzu comes from a place of complete honesty. Sometimes it can be sad or vulnerable, but most of all, I wish for you to find the hope, love, and humor that he inspires in me, because I am continuing to be inspired. If you want to stay in the bowl of blue marbles with me, follow Fan You Fan Me on Twitter, X, whatever. Facebook, Instagram, Redbubble, YouTube, and fanyoufanme.com because Yuzu loves us and we love Yuzu. Until next time, say it with me Yuzuru Hanyu. The Fan You Fan Me podcast is a Back to the Forest production. Back to the forest? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, just kidding. <laughs>